Kingsley Plantation, Slavery Builds the Business. Fort George Island, Florida. The National Park Service places this rendition of the Kingsley Plantation towards the front of the plantation for visitors to see. My mother, do you love freedom? Yes, yes, now my freedom. Mother, do you love freedom? Yes, yes, so sweet. Oh, Lord, I've just come from the mountain. Just come. Zephaniah Kingsley came to Florida like many other businessmen to create a successful business. He brought his wife Anna and three children with him to Fort George Island. According to the National Park Service, Anna was bought by Zephaniah as a slave. She was an active participant in the management of the plantation. In 1811, however, Kingsley did free her and she acquired her own land and slaves. Being from Africa, Anna had a lot of traditions and cultures that helped her to be successful as a plantation manager in Florida. After she was freed by Kingsley, these traditions helped her to manage again her own slaves and her own land with success. Seems boys like these troubles going to carry me. Anna lived above the kitchen. This allowed her to have hands-on control of the domestic matters for the plantation. The Fort George plantation used about 60 slaves to produce Sea Island cotton. As noted on this map provided by the National Park Service, slave cabins were approximately a fifth of a mile from the main house. There was a total of 32 cabins. These cabins were made out of tabby. This material is a blend of culture that includes Native Americans, West African, and Spanish. This photograph, represented by George T. Bigot, shows the cabin structure and the curved placement of the cabin. The tabby material was used for the building, but wood was used for the roof. Men, women, and children lived in these cabins. The National Park Service celebrates by reminding people how tabby was in art. The service continues to use the art of tabby to restore the cabins. They ask people not to touch the original tabby, but to feel free to touch the piece they put on display. The National Park Service has created a small video showing how to actually make tabby. Here is a photo of a refurbished cabin, 
And this picture here is how they looked years ago. The National Park Service was able to share many photos of the Kinkley Plantation. If you go to the Kingsley Plantation today, this is what the slave cabins currently look like. They are in the middle of being refurbished. In this photograph, you notice that the cabins are curved. There are 32 about a fifth of a mile away from the main house. Visitors are welcome to walk inside of the cabins to actually see what it was like to live there. Families would live in these small cabins. There was a fireplace and some windows, but for the most part, there was no air conditioning, no heating, and no amenities. So after a long, hard day in the cotton fields, this is where families came to reside, tired and weary. Slave labor on this Sea Island cotton plantation was performed according to the task system. Under this system, each slave was assigned a specific amount of work for that day. Give me your eyes, give me your peace. Clap your hands and bend your knees. Get up, children. Get up, children. Get up, children. Go round the wall. I don't want to stumble and I don't want to fall. Now that suits me. That suits me. That suits me. The task system was primarily used on plantations that produced cotton. The gang system was the other type of labor system used in slavery time. The gang system was typically used on the tobacco and sugar plantations. Under the gang system, slaves were worked in groups under the supervision of a driver who was also a slave and compelled to work the entire day for the owner's profit. The National Park Service has graciously provided information to visitors of Kingsley Plantation about the task system. Not only do they provide photographs and documented information, they also have a section of the plantation marked off so you can understand the responsibility that each slave had. As mentioned earlier, under this task system, each slave was assigned a specified amount of work for the day, and upon completion of this task, the slave was permitted to use the balance of the day as he or she chose. Tasks in the fields were measured by units of a quarter of an acre, which is equivalent to a 105 foot square. Tasking requirements outside the field were often defined as well. Ginning 20 to 30 pounds of cotton was a daily task. A barrel maker's task might be set at constructing three barrels a day. Under the task system, it was assumed that slaves would raise a variety of crops in their own gardens. These products could supplement the slave's plantation rations or be traded or sold through the plantation owner. Here are a few examples of other plantations that use the task system. Your 
As we come to a close of the Kingsley Plantation, it is important for us to constantly look back at our history. The task system taught us how these plantations were run. The horrid events of that time reminds us to all have good humanitarian spirit. Way over in Egypt's land, you will gain the victory. Way over in Egypt's land, brother, you will gain the day. March on, Lord, and you will gain the victory. March, my brother, Lord, and you will gain the day. As a visitor of National Parks, I would like to thank the National Park Service for preserving historical events and monuments. This preservation allows my generation as well as future generations to learn from the mistakes of our past and to hopefully to move forward in a better light. But I like to see your foot might slip, your soul be lost. I heard the angels singing one morning soon, one morning soon, my Lord, one morning soon. I heard it, but no kids ready for that great day. Oh, but Satan camps upon you on that great day. Mm -hmm. Satan camps upon you that great day.